Hello everybody, it's Father Richard Gonzalez here. If you've been thinking about going to confession, but perhaps it's been quite a while since the last time you went to confession and you're feeling a little bit nervous, well then this video is possibly for you. I'll be offering some tips from an article that I recently read on the catholiclink.org website, which I have linked in the description box right below. And within this same article, they also offer supplemental links within its own website to further help you. So yes, we may be nervous in going to confession, but it's always worth it to go. As Pope Francis has said, don't be afraid to go to the sacrament of confession where you will meet Jesus who forgives you. So let's not be afraid. Let's be confident. Our Lord is there waiting with his love for you. And then I also say, welcome back. So let's get started and prepare to go to our next confession. Tip number one know your options. If you have not been to confession for a while, find a parish that has a regular confession time. Show up and get in line with the other people. Or you can contact your parish priest or another priest and schedule an appointment and meet in his office. Going to a regular confession time with the other parishioners allows you to feel like you're a part of a community and how you're all there for the same reason while making an appointment with the priest may help you feel relaxed especially if you want to discuss things a little further. Either way is fine, and either way, you still experience the miracle of the sacrament. Tip number two. Hopefully now you have found somewhere to go to confession. So now is the time to make an examination of conscience. And this is the process of prayerfully reflecting on what sins we need to confess. If we have any mortal sins, that is, very grave sins, they must always be confessed such as behaviors or patterns that you know that are wrong and are holding you back from God. Pray to the Holy Spirit to show you clearly what it is you need to say and how to say it. And sometimes things may not always be obvious to us or might have been forgotten over time. Finally, remember that God is always calling to us, waiting for us, and is granting us the grace and encouraging us to confess. Tip number three, what some people call the script. At some point, you will have learned or remembered that there is a certain formula or script that we follow during confession. So don't panic if you cannot remember it, especially if you decided the last minute to go to confession. If this is your case, again, relax. It's okay to tell the priest that you are not sure of the wording and he will guide you through it. Tip number four, how to go to confession. Be clear when stating your intentions. Do not be vague. And you don't have to go into deep detail and tell a lengthy story, rambling on and on. And it is okay to take a list with you. If there's one particular sin that is causing you a lot of shame, it can be helpful to say it first to get it over with right away. Tip number five actually has three different components regarding the priest himself. Worries and fears that we may have within ourselves about confessing to a priest can actually block or inhibit us from even approaching the sacrament. And we may even have questions within ourselves asking, what if he knows me? Will he remember my sins? What if I have something terrible to say? Well, first, nothing you could say to a priest could shock him, no matter who you are and priests have heard it all before. Also, through the grace of the sacrament, the priest tends to forget the confession. Trust me on that. Secondly, it's likely that the priest you're going to, he himself goes to confession on a regular basis. So he knows the very real feelings you're experiencing right now. He understands the courage that it takes to get to this place in one's life. So he will be humbled and privileged to be a part of this grace in your reconciliation with God. And third, no matter how well or not you know the priest, whether he gives you an absolutely fantastic advice or just keeps it quite simple and basic, remember that it is Christ you are confessing to. In this moment of confession, the priest is in that state what we call in persona Christi, 
which means that he is in the person of Christ. The priest is the human vessel of God's mercy and forgiveness. The sacrament is powerful. No matter the priest's own weaknesses, flaws, or lackluster confessional advice, we confess to human priest who, yes, has his own flaws, but through him we experience the tenderness and the mercy of a Heavenly Father who loves us. For tip number six, let's take a look at the sacrament itself for a moment. To put it simply, brass tacks. You go into a private space with the priest, tell him the bad stuff you have done, he says a blessing over you, and you come out wiped clean, a total fresh start. The guilt of all the things you have ever done is lifted from you. A relationship with God, which you may have thought was damaged beyond repair, is more than just mended. It is completely restored. Our own broken human relationships can begin to heal. The fear and the nerves we once had are a small price to pay for the peace, the beauty, and the mercy of this sacrament. Don't let fear or your pride get in the way of the amazing grace of the sacrament of healing. Our seventh and our last tip is, when you come out of confession, after confession, you may feel happy, joyful, or relieved. You may feel at peace, or you may feel just normal. <laughs> and all of that is quite fine. Our feelings are not necessarily signs of what has just taken place. That you have been absolved of your sins and how you are right with God and yourself. After confession, spend time in prayer thanking God. Do your penance, that act of charity or that prayer that the priest assigned. Making a regular confession means that things don't pile up within yourself and you get to experience God's forgiveness and love in a very real way more often. It's similar to having a wound and making sure you redress the bandages properly. You need to do that very often, and it's the same with confession. Keep going back for more healing, strength, and mercy. So as you prepare for your next confession, may God bless you today, tomorrow, and always, and I'll see you real soon. If you enjoyed this YouTube video, consider giving it a thumbs up like, subscribing to my YouTube channel if you haven't already, and hitting the notification bell and the all tab so you are notified of all future videos on my YouTube channel.